Hi there, it's Mrs. Sinanacone back for another story time. And it's still November, so we're still celebrating Native American Heritage Month. And last week I showed you this image of the Navajo Code Talkers. And in our library I found a really good fiction storybook called The Unbreakable Code by Sarah Hoagland Hunter and illustrated by Julia Minor about those Navajo Code Talkers. And I bring this back up because last week was also Veterans Day and the Navajo Code Talkers were veterans. In fact, a lot of Native Americans have served in all branches of the armed forces. These images come from the Encyclopedia of American Indian History and Culture from National Geographic. And this image is a Native American Vietnam War veteran with his granddaughter on the Fort Hall Indian Reservation in Idaho. Today's story is a special one because it connects to Veterans Day too, in an unexpected way I'll talk to you more about after. And today's story is called At the Mountain's Base by Tracy Sorrell and illustrated by Wishoyo Alvitre. And you might recognize that Tracy Sorrell also wrote last week's story, but she used a different illustrator and the pictures in this book are incredible, so I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. And so, At the Mountain's Base by Tracy Sorrell and Wishoyo Alvitre. At the Mountain's Base grows a hickory tree. Beneath this sits a cabin. In that cabin lies a cozy kitchen where a stove's fire warms. On that stove simmer savory goodness in well-worn pans. By those pans sits a grandma, weaving and worrying. Around that grandma gathers a family, tending and singing. Within their song unfolds a battle, testing and demanding. In that battle soars a plane, climbing and diving. Inside that plane flies a pilot, protecting and defending. Within that pilot forms a prayer. Pleading for peace. Because at the mountain's base, beneath the hickory tree, sits a cabin. And in that cabin huddles a family waiting for her return. And that's the end. What did you think? It's pretty short but I was pretty surprised at who the fighter was. There is one clue. If you look in this next image, there's a photograph of her behind the woman in front. And I want to read to you from the author's note because that gives the most interesting part of the stories. She says, although this poem is about a fictional Cherokee family, Native women have served and continue to serve in wars while st receiving strong support from their families. And the woman in this picture is a real person. Her name was Ola Mildred Millie Rexrote and she was an Oglala Lakota pilot. 
She's the only Native woman among other women in the Air Force service pilots in World War II, and she risked her life towing targets for male student pilots to fire on for practice. She also transported non-flying personnel and cargo during the war. Then she served on active duty in the Air Force Reserve during the Korean War and as an air traffic controller. And in 2009, she was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal, which is the highest award given by the U.S. Congress to individuals or groups for outstanding accomplishments and contributions. A few months after she died in 2017, the Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota renamed and dedicated a building in her honor. And there's just one last interesting thing I want to share with you about the illustrations. Washoyo is a Tongva um, tribal member from Southern California. And she shows in this picture, if you notice, the grandmother starts and she's weaving something. And by the end of the story, the weaving is complete. That's in their lap of the family when they're waiting for their loved one to come home. And you can see it in the backgrounds of different places too, behind the plane and the house. And she included this partly to pay honor to her grandmother and mother who uh, loved the fiber arts, but also so you could see the way that in the beginning a project started and then by the end the weaving is complete when the story is complete. And I thought that was an interesting way to tie the story together. And I also like to work with yarn myself, so I had a nice connection there as well. And that's about it for today. If you want to meet me um, during your Encore Day, you can come to meet.google.com slash lookup slash gpkjievh5y again during your Encore time from 1.30 to 2 p.m on your Library Encore Day. Also, I've got to tell you, the Lit Limo comes through the East End on Mondays. Go to rvaschools.net and search Lit Limo for the schedule. And so until next time, read good books, stay safe, and remember that I love you.